and on to solving percent problems. Uh, something that I failed to bring up here in my notes is, you know, what are percent problems? Well, percent problems are the way people describe things. There was a 10% increase in sales. Uh, I recently had a 5% decrease in body mass. So it's just the way people talk. And if you get into the world of business, it gets used a fair amount, not as much in engineering and science, but it's still there. So since they always pop up, we need to learn how to use them. And the first thing to do is memorize some of these phrases. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about this phrase. Big part to worry about is right here of B, but A is P percent of B if, and this is of course ties in with the ratios proportions we're doing, A over B equals P over 100. None of that means anything until we get to an actual problem. So what percent of 25 is 17? Well, I just said of, and whatever's after the of is the B value. So we've got 25 equals, and what percent? Well, P stands for percent, so we don't know that. P over 100, and that means this has to be the A value. So that's how I work those out. Now we could cross multiply, excuse me, forgot to write in what the actual A was, but we can just solve it, make our lives a little bit easier. One, four, that gets me P equals 68. So 68, my bad, 17 is 68% of 25. That's it. Now, I don't like that way doing the problems this way, so I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to write it as this A equals P percent times B. And A equals P percent times B could also be written as A equals um, P over 100 times B, which is the way I'm typically going to write it. So we just did this problem. Let's do it again. 17 equals P times, where's the of? That's my B value, 25. So we just divide by 25. And we get P equals 0 0.68, which is the same as 68%. And now it's just practice. What number is 15%? So that has a percent in it, so that's my P value. Of, so that's my B value. And we've got the A equals P percent times B. So it's pretty straightforward from there. A equals 0 0.15 times 88. I'm gonna need a calculator fairly often in this unit. We get A equals 13.2. Twenty is twelve point five percent of what number? So we didn't get that. So that's going to be my B. So this has to be my A because this has to be my P. So twenty equals point one two five, and that's writing it without the percent by dividing by hundred. Simply move the decimal point two points over, two places over times B. So divide by point one two five. Divide by point one two five. Get B equals 160. Simple enough. Lots of practice on these. You can get lost and confused. Always come back to A equals P percent times B. That will set you free. Moving on, getting away from numbers and uh, the work with the variables. Uh, we're going to work, move to working with just variables. If we're given the equation AX plus B equals C, how do we solve for X? Well, here's AX plus B equals C, and that means that A, B, and C are constants, because you can never divide by a variable. I'm going to write that down, and I will repeat it often. I think when I test on this one day, I'm going to make that my extra credit on my final exam if I were to put extra credit on a final exam. Never divide by a variable. So let's solve this to the addition subtraction first. AX equals negative B plus C. We could have put them in either spot. Divide by A, divide by A, divide by A. We get X equals negative B plus C 
over a. And that's it. And we could have written it as negative b over a plus c over a if you really wanted to, but it doesn't matter. And the reason we do that is now we can do what's in math terms called plug and chug. Looking at this equation, ax plus b equals c, well, we just solved it. We got x equals negative b plus c over a. Well, obviously, a s equal 2, b equals 5, and c equals 11. So we can just plug them in. Negative 5 plus 11 all over 2 equals 6 over 2 equals 3. So we get x equals 3. Now, personally, I would rather put these numbers in sol into here and just solve that equation, but this can be a way that you can set up a spreadsheet or a simpler way to do a problem if you weren't sure what the constant is going to be until much later. It'll save you some time. So the real way we're going to use it is when we get to the next unit, we start graphing things. We need everything in terms of y. So if I gave you something like 3x plus 2y equals 8, and said write it as y, here's what you do. You move everything around. Move the negative 3x over there. 2y equals negative 3x plus 8. Divide everything by 2. Cancels. 4. y equals negative 3 halves x plus 4. And definitely write it that way because when you go to graph it's a lot easier to graph it when it sets up like that and finally sometimes we want to solve formulas we know what the area is going to be we know what the base is we know we don't know what the height is so let's solve it for height so we write it as a equals one half base times height, and we divide by base, get h equals, pardon me, 1 half h equals a over b, multiply by 2, get h equals 2a over b. You will use this a lot in science classes. You have a formula and you have to solve it for a different variable. So, area of the triangle 64.4 don't like the way I'm writing things and the base length otherwise known as B equals 14 we don't have any units here so we can just bang them through what's the height gonna be well just put it in 2 times 64.4 over 14 equals 9.2 that's it Practice, practice, good luck.